Welcome to GED Math and Dirt News. In these tutorials, I will show you how to solve many of the GED math problems using the TI-30XS scientific calculator. Welcome to GED Math in 30 Days. I'll be your host. My name is Jeremy Tinsley. I'm an adult educator for over 20 years, and I created the ebook and the website and these videos for people to be able to pass their GED math exam quickly, okay, using the TI-30XX calculator. In today's session, we will go over area, okay? Um, so we will mainly discuss the area of a triangle and area of a rectangle. Two, this shouldn't be a long video, so let's get started. First of all, let's look at our formula sheets and be familiar with our formula sheet, okay? Area is described or is given to us right on the formula sheet. So on our formula sheet, we have the area of a square, rectangle, a par parallelogram, a triangle, and a trapezoid in a circle. So I just want to go over quick so, so people can truly understand how easy area is. Area is two dimensions, so you got a length and a width. So let's start with a rectangle. Okay, we got our length times width. Area is the inside, so we'll be multiplying. Okay, so the area of a rectangle is length times width. Okay, but you also can look at it as a rectangle as the base of a shape and the height of a shape. So you can also look at it as area equal base times height. If you fully understand that, I will be able to explain area very quickly. Okay. So first of all, let me erase it. Oh, let me then actually let me get it. So now we have a parallelogram. Well, parallelogram is just a shifted, just a shifted rectangle, basically. Because guess what? A rectangle is a parallelogram. It has two sets of, of, of parallel lines. Okay, so you're just shifting it and the height and the base. Remember, the height touches the base. So very easy. That's why the area of a parallelogram is what? Base times height. Same thing or same formula as a rectangle, base times height. So now we look at a triangle. So if you look at a triangle, if I cut this rectangle in half, you have a triangle. That's why the formula for a triangle is one half base times height. Again, it's all centered around base times height. So if you fully understand that, even though they're using different variables for square, rectangle, parallelogram, even though they're using all different variables, is basically the same thing, base times height. Okay, so now if we look at a parallelogram, I mean a, a trapezoid, okay, very easy. Let me show you something visually. Watch this. We have a trapezoid. If I take this triangle and fill it and put it right here, Guess what? It makes a rectangle. So again, it's still base times height. But if you notice, they have two different lengths on two different bases. So we got base one, we got base two. So what we want to do is we want to find the average of the two bases. This is why you add the two bases together and you multiply by one half. So one half, base one plus base two. So you find the averages of the two bases and then you multiply by the height. Again, base times height. So that's a quick run around of the formulas that you're going to need uh, for, the, for the area for the GED exam. I've already covered area and circumference of a circle. Check out my previous video. Okay, so I'm going to clear your screen and let's get started. Okay, so what are the, uh, you can almost be guaranteed that you're going to have the following question. A rectangle has an area of 54 square inches and a length of six inches. And of course, not this exact question, but where they give you the area and you got to determine the length or the width. So they give you some variation. Uh, sometimes they ask for the area, but it's very easy. This is what you have to remember. Always start with your formula. So we got area equal length times width. Instead of the area, that's given. It's 54. So instead of A, we're going to put 54. The length. It's also given. So instead of length, we want to put six. And we don't know W. It's still unknown. And that's what they want us to solve for. This is a simple one-step algebraic equation. Both Divide both sides by six. Six is canceled. You get W equal nine. A nice, easy 30-second to 45-second problem. 
you're almost guaranteed you're going to have either area or perimeter or rectangle on your GED math exam. Okay, so one of the things you want to remember is this video is I'm going to show you how to solve a lot of these using your calculator quickly and easy. This is a fairly easy problem, but if you wanted to solve this using your calculator, you would do the following. Let me clear the screen. Go back to my calculator. What you will notice is, remember, always math is about patterns. So the pattern that you understand is that if we're given the area, and we want to solve for either length or width. All we have to do is divide. So if we want to know the width, we would divide by L. And we would cancel the L's. And we would get area divided by the length is equal to width. So what we're going to notice is you can divide by the area by whatever the other given is, whether it's the base or the height. And it will give you the Other unknown, very easy. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to hit ND. Our area is 54. Our uh, length was six. Hit enter. We all done. That's how easy it is. Area, a given, divided by the other given, either the length or the width. Very easy. Very, very easy. Now that becomes a 15 to 20 second problem. Okay, now remember, instead of spending time you use your calculator, you can do it in a couple seconds. You don't want to make any mistakes. So I'm going to clear this. Clear my screen. OK. And the next most common question they ask about the area is three questions that they're going to ask you about an area on the exam. They're going to ask you about an area of a circle, guaranteed. They're going to ask you about an area perimeter of, of a rectangle. and the next one is they're probably going to ask you the area of a triangle. OK, so let's do a small example fairly quickly. I'm going to just draw the triangle right here on the screen. OK, and I'm going to give you the area. So I'm going to say the area is 70, 70 feet squared. And let's say the base is 10 feet. OK, most people rush into this problem. And they think the height is seven because 10 times seven is 70. This is, believe it or not, even though this is an easy problem, it's only a 50% or, or a little bit of over 50% uh, last time I talked uh, to someone who has knowledge about this situation, okay? Uh, this is a, a question that's missed an awful lot. So watch this. So again, always start with your formula. So area equal one half, base times height, okay? So now, in, the, in order to get, to get rid of that half, okay, well, let's solve it first. So 70 is equal to one half times 10 times height. 70, half of 10 is five, multiplied by H. So half of 10 is five times H. In order to get H by itself, we're gonna divide both sides by five. The fives cancel, and we will get our height is equal to 14. Okay? So your height is 14. A lot of people make the mistake again. They thought, oh, oh, seven. The height is seven because 10 times seven is 70. No. This is a don't miss this problem. Okay? So the height is 14. All right. So I hope you understand that. Let me clear the screen. The next thing I want to show you is how you solve for a variable. One half area equal one half base times height. If we're solving for the H, that means we won't get the H by itself. How do we get rid of a half? The opposite of um, a half is multiplying by two. So if we multiply two on both sides, we're going to get 2A equal base times height. Now, you should now notice, you should now see that pattern. Okay, if we want to solve for the height, we're going to divide by the base or the the known that we have, just as I explained in the pre, uh, previously for the rectangle. So what you should see is now 2A divided by B is equal to H. Well, guess what? What if you want, what, what if you, they gave you the height? Same thing, 2A divided by H is equal to your B. So now you got a simple way to quickly figure out the missing 
either base or the height of a triangle. Now watch this, we're gonna hit ND. I'm gonna show you how easy and quickly it is. I'm gonna hit ND. I'm gonna hit two times my area, which we said was 70. I'm gonna hit my down arrow. And then we said our base was 10. Look at that, 14. That easy, simple, very easy. So this is a quick way if you're not, if you're given the area and they're not giving you either base or the height, this is a quick formula. That's not on your formula sheet, but we manipulated the original formula to find out what we want. Okay, so now I wasn't planning to do this in the video, but this morning I checked my Facebook and I saw a problem um, that quite a few people could not understand or know how to do. So I want to go that now. So let me clear the screen. And this may help you. I don't know if you're going to see on the exam or not, or a type of problem like this, but I just wanted to touch on it because I saw a lot of people uh, in the Facebook, my Facebook group, and they could not do this problem. So let me put the problem on the screen so you can see it. And it says a right triangle has dimensions as shown in the diagram below. Wow. What is the approximate area? Wow. Okay. This is not a hard problem. Um, there's two special triangles you should be very familiar with, okay? And they are the 45-45-90 triangle. And this is in reference to the angles of the triangle. That means the sides are going to be A, A, A squared root of 2. So a quick example of that would be if I have a right triangle, and this side is 5, this side is 5. So my two legs are A. My hypotenuse is going to be a square root of two. So my hypotenuse is five square root of two. Okay, a nice, easy triangle, 45, 45, 90. It will save you a lot of work. Okay, very easy. Now, I did go over this in a uh, previous video. Okay, now, for this example, though, you need another type of triangle, which is very, very important. It's called a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Okay, where... The, the smallest side is opposite side, the 30 degree angle. The longest side is opposite side, the 90 degree angle. And the side in the middle is A square root of three. Okay? Now, we could use a unit circle and different things of that nature to show you I can prove this. But listen, for right now, for the GD math exam, this is what I want you to know. Okay? 30, 60, 90. If my side opposite side to 30 degrees is A, my hypotenuse is double that, okay? And then the other side is that side multiplied by the square root of three. So given here, they gave us side C, which is eight. That's the hypotenuse, so A, B, C, A, B, C. So we know 2A is equal to A, or the side opposite side to 30 degree is half the hypotenuse, so that means my side A is four, okay? So we have four, we have eight, and now to get that side opposite side to 60 degrees, we just multiply four times the square root of three. So now the base is gonna be four, our height is gonna be four square root of three. How do I know that? Because the side opposite side to 30 degree is four. The side opposite the 60 degrees. Well, how do we know this for 60? Remember, all triangles must add up to 180 degrees. So we got 90, 30 is 120. We have 60 degrees left. And the side opposite that 60 degree is 4, with four square root of 3, which is a height. Okay, so we, we recall our formula from our formula sheet. Area is 1 half base times height. Area equal one half, our base is four, our height is four square root of three, okay? So this is where now we're gonna go use our calculator. Let's make this problem easy. So first we had to identify this triangle as a 30, 60, 90 triangle. We then had to identify the sides. Uh, they gave us the hypotenuse was eight. So therefore the side opposite, the 30 degree angle is half of that. So eight divided by two is four. And then our third side, B, is 4 square root of 3, or the opposite side to 60 degrees, okay? So let me go to the, uh, uh, let me clear the screen, first of all. 
of, of, of well, I'm going to keep the 30, 60, 90 up there. Um, if you didn't write this down, I would pause this video and I would write those two important special triangles down. I would definitely write those special triangles down. Okay, if you didn't, uh, let me move this over uh, for our calculator so we can see everything in our calculator. Move this here, and we're going to move this here. Okay. And we're going to go back to our calculator. And the reason why I moved everything is so not only can you see me do it on the calculator, but you can also see if you want to repeat it. If you want to pause this video and then type them in and make sure you know how to do it. So again, ND, we're going to put the half in. Again, look at what we're doing. We're getting our formula from the formula sheet. We're substituting what we know, and then we're putting it directly into the calculator. One half, we use parentheses because we're multiplying. And then four square root of three. Four, we're going to hit second. We're going to hit X squared to get your square root button. We're going to hit our three. Now, it's very important you get out of your square root so you can put your second set of parentheses. So one half, four times the four square root of three. We're going to hit enter, and we get an answer of eight square root of three. Unfortunately, our answers are multiple choice. We're in decimals. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to hit double arrows, and now we know our answer for that third side, that missing side, or the area, uh, the area of this triangle is 13.86. Okay, so now we're going to um, clear the screen so we can go back to them and select the appropriate answer. Okay, so let me clear the screen. So 13.86. Mm -hmm. Okay, so look at that. What is the approximate area of the triangle? 13.86. They rounded it off because they said a key word, they said approximate, which means we're going to round off in some fashion. They didn't say by tenths, they didn't say by whole number, we just approximated. But by looking at the multiple choice, you can notice that they rounded off to the first decimal place, which is the tenths. So let's go back to our calculator. I want to show you something. Remember, watch my previous video about rounding. Or well, watch this. I want to show you something that's very important. This calculator will also round for you. Let me clear the screen. So we have our answer, and we want to round to the nearest tenth. So we're going to go to mode. We're going to come down to float. We're going to go over to the first, uh, go uh, select number one, because that's the first decimal place. We're going to hit enter. We're going to hit second and mode to quit out of that menu or the, that, that display, I'm gonna hit enter. There we go, 13.9. So this calculator can also be used to round. Watch my rounding video to, for more experience in how to round. Uh, to go back, we wanna hit mode again, go back to float. And now we'll see our original number, okay? Very important. All right, let me clear the screen. So um, that was today's lesson on area, again, I didn't go over parallelogram and trapezoid. What you want to understand is get your formula form in your formula sheet, plug in the values that you know. The most common um, problems that will be in the exam are area and perimeter of a rectangle, and area perimeter of a triangle, and area and circumference of a circle. Make sure you know how to do each one of those problems. Thank you for joining me. Uh, check out my website, uh, passgdmath.com. Uh, I have an ebook that that goes over even how to do the more difficult problems, linear equations, quadratic equations, uh, uh, evaluating a function. So again, um, it's, I have a money back, it's only $19.99, I have a money back guarantee, 30 day money back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, I'll return your money. The only reason I created this book and this website and this videos for you to pass your math quickly. So that's why GD Math in 30 days. Uh, good luck. I hope to see you soon. Uh, I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.